What is good guys, back with more SPL coverage, we have Black Oblivion playing for the Classiest versus Flame Teeny playing for the Indie Scooters. The score is 6-5 at the moment, this is the last and deciding game for this series. So looking at the teams, I'm expecting Mega Latios on Black Oblivion's side. Most likely Zemo from either the Tren or the Greninja. AV uh, Tangros helps versus opposing Greninja, Zygarde, and could be nice for the Bulu in this matchup, especially if it has Sludge Bomb. The Lanos is most likely Choice Scarf, and the Zapdos is probably Heatwave, Bruce, Discharge, and Defog. Uh, Heatwave just to help with the Katana matchup, and Defog on Zapdos over a potential Scarf Lanos, because Scarf Lander Defog is not reliable at all. Uh, AV brings a bulkier team that he already used as SPL, if I'm not mistaken. I remember that it's uh, Death Sableye, AV Bulu, and Scarf Katana. And then Allo is obviously going to be Wish Protect uh, Toxic, last move either Knockoff or Scald. And then Zemo is either on Landers or on Heatran, I don't remember that at all from his game where he used this team. But I think Effie has a good matchup, he can deal with most of Black Oblivion's team. Like Grassy Terrain helps his team to stay healthy, and Alamomola is going to be able to deal with like the Lari. Bulu is going to be really annoying spamming um, Nature's Madness with Black Oblivion's team. So I assume we're just going to see a Discharge from Zapdos here and a knockoff from the Sableye to get rid of the leftovers. Um, he does fish for the para, he doesn't get it. Knockoff gets rid of the lefties. And I think a Black Oblivion is just going to spam Discharge. Him leading with Zapdos over leading with Heatran makes me think Heatran is leftovers. Because if Heatran was Zemo, he could have let off. It would have let off well versus a Sableye. But um, leftovers Heatran doesn't lead off that well versus a Sableye. Because you don't want to lose your leftovers, obviously, early on in the game. Now, Effie is probably going to switch um, in either Heatran or Bulu, but he has go Landris. They're expecting this charge again. And now I would go into, like I just said, Heatran Bulu. That's what I would have done this turn as well. But yeah, I just thought of this charge PP. If Backupline has HP I I don't think he should go for it, even if he had it. And I don't think he had it at all. I think Gladius is a good play here. Latios pretty much covers the Bulu and the Heatran, scares out the Heatran with the Earthquake, and Bulu also loses to Ladi 1v1. Because, like, um, Ladi obviously has recover, reliable recovery, and Bulu's terrain would eventually run out. And Effie would probably have to go into the uh, Alamomola versus the, the Ladi. Yeah, between Sableye, Bulu, and Alamomola, Effie can check the Greninja pretty well. Depending on Greninja's head, he can, I would even say counter Greninja really well. So he does go Heatran there. Not 100% sure what he expected. Maybe he expected... Uh, yeah, I don't know what he expected there. But yeah, now both players should switch out. Um, not running to risk uh, off power here. So Effie could either go into his Landris or his Sableye. And Black Elvin could either go to his Ladi or his Greninja. Those are the potential plays. I'm um, thinking that this Heatran is Magma Storm off power. Um, probably Taunt and Rocks on, on Black Elephant's side. Yeah, they're taking quite a time. Estros has been really laggy today, or like the last days. There were like games earlier where. Um, Took like one or two minutes for the play to go through, or people couldn't like click the play that they wanted to click. I hope it's not gonna take too long. <laughs> but I feel like Lari or Greninja, like Lari makes a bit more sense to me. We will see what Black Oblivion chooses to go into. Like, if he can just check pretty much everything on BO's side, um, the Tangros is pretty much walled by Sableye. Heatran also walled by Sableye unless it gets off post with death drops or if it's Z, but it's probably not Z. So he goes in Grand as Effie goes Landris. Now uh, Effie is most likely going to go Alamomola just to scout the, Sab uh, the Greninja set. His other potential play would be going Sableye because that would also kind of work versus most Greninja sets. Because it does run next with death. Um, back up with the if he has spikes, that's a potential play, but he has to fear Sableye coming out. Um, he could also like double out, but like I don't really see yeah, that he gets go for spikes. Wow. And he does get the play correct. That was somewhat risky, but even if Sableye came out there, he could have still gone Zapdos and defog the spike away, so it wasn't like super risky. And this is definitely what Black Elvin has to do, I think. Like get up spikes and because Effie's defog is most likely the Katana, which should be Choice Scarf. Uh, going Heatran is a really good play because 5 out of 6 mons on his team can get hit by Toxic. Heatran is the one mon that can get hit by Toxic. 
This is why it's really important that Hedron has its leftovers because it can deal with the Alamomola. And I think Effie is probably going to switch out because Hedron beats Alamomola 1v1. Uh, if it has, depending on its set. If it says Magma Storm Toxic, it beats it, but even if it's Magma Storm Taunt, it might beat it. Uh, probably either Sableye or Land Resist to play here. If this Heatron is not max special attack, I'm pretty sure Sableye can switch in even with a spike up, but we'll have to see. There's a Sableye, there's a Magma Storm, and it doesn't do, that doesn't do that much. So if he can just recover here. Um, Backoblin could fish for off pass, but after once, but he probably doesn't want to stay in to risk losing leftovers. So he just goes out and he does uh, show his pressure. I didn't talk about that earlier. Pressure is nice to start out some PP uh, versus like Tabu Bulu and. If he can let this Zapdos get Skull Burn, that might be nice for Black Oblivion because he doesn't want to let this... Because then he can keep it in on Alamomola later in the game. Because if it gets toxic, it would be horrible. But Effie is probably going to switch here into either Bulu or Heatran, right? Both seem fine as he DCs, but he's back, okay. Uh, he's just going to Discharge, I assume. Like, he's never going to Heat Wave with, um, with the Heatran in the back. So he does Discharge. Doesn't get a para though, it does nothing to the Bulu. So Effie has a few options here, he could just Nature's Madness. Black Oblivion is obviously not gonna stay in. Uh, he's probably gonna go Tang, yeah, there's the Tang. Now, Effie's either gonna go Sableye or Landris, but probably Sableye is fine here. You don't really take anything from Spikes because you get Grassy Terrain back. You can also protect to get extra grass to run back. And you don't want like anything to get knocked off, so I agree with going Sableye there. Now, uh, Black Oven is probably just gonna go back to Zapdos. I don't really see another play. And yeah, Heatron uh, revealed its leftovers on Black Oven's side, so the Zemo Fuser is most likely the Greninja. So it's short spikes, so it's um, Battlebond Greninja. Probably the Hydro Vortex, which is more common than the Dark Kinium, the Dark Pulse. So he did recover just to stay healthy, protects to start of the discharge PP, and now he's gonna switch again. He protected there just to, so the terrain ends, and now he can go Bulu and set the terrain back up again, which is just a logical play by Effie. He's playing this fine so far. One like one spike is not too bad for him, but if multiple spikes go up, it could get bad for him. Does he not just manage again? He gets so he trained this time. Um, I think he's he, he might want to stay in here with he trend depending on his set. But he could also just go save life, he doesn't want to risk missing Magma Storms and getting knocked off. But I assume Black Oblivion is just going to switch into either Greninja or Larios. Because he definitely needs the Tangros. Mainly for the Tapu Bulu, because Tapu Bulu is playing Nature's Madness versus his team is going to be super annoying if he loses his Tangros. As Zapdos, even if it, after it gets Nature's Madness, it can't really roost on the Bulu because then it loses its flying type and gets hit hard by Holy Joe Woodhammer, right? So he does have sub. So if he had sub, then staying was a good play, but I didn't know if he had that. So now this is a huge problem. Sub means he's probably sub toxic as Ladius comes out in a Magma Storm. So Magma Storm, off power, sub, and most likely toxic in the last slot. Um, Bagovin is gonna off quick hit just to break the, the sub from the Heatran. If he has toxic, he can go for that, which he most likely has. The sub again um, to scout out the Lari set. Well, that's also a good play. It doesn't really make a huge difference. Uh, I would have probably just Toxic, but this works fine. Um, unless he doesn't have it, but I'm pretty sure he has Toxic. He doesn't Mega Evolve back up with him. Maybe trying to bluff Joy Scarf Lari, but I'm pretty sure this is Mega Lari. And I don't really see a reason not to Mega as there's the Toxic. Because, like, you just get extra bulk if you Mega Evolve, and there's, like, no scenario. Like, not Mega doesn't do anything besides bluffing the Scarf. Uh, I think Effie could switch here into Tabu Bulu to get the terrain back up. He could also go into his Alamomola if he's mixed defensive, more so speed def. He goes Harlando, they're expecting Earthquake or Recover. Recover, okay, Roost, same thing. Um, yeah, now he has the Intimidate up. And, but I, he still has to fear Draco Meteor. I mean, Black Oblivion doesn't know confirmed if this Landris is Scarf yet. So if he's fearing a scarf U turn, he might want to switch or um, stay in and recover is also an option. But I think switching is the play here for Black Oblivion. Most likely into Zapdos. I think switching into Zapdos is a fine play. Because yeah, I'm expecting uh, either the Alamomola or the Bulo to come out here from Effie. And even if this lander is scarf, which I don't think it is, Zapdos also covers the scarf U turn. But yeah, getting that toxic on the Lari is pretty huge for Effie. 
Like, Lari wasn't gonna win for Black Oblivion, but it was definitely uh, nice to have Lari. Like, he obviously still has it, but being toxic means it's crippled, it can't do its thing. Um, it can't really switch into Heatran well at all, because Toxic plus Magma Storm plus Magma Storm secondary effect would hurt the Lari quite a lot with, um, with the Toxic here. So, like, his only other Heatran switch in would be... Ninja could switch in once, but like that's also not reliable. So he just goes Zapdos there, covers u turn covers Alamola, but yeah, if he goes Buddha, which was also an option, like I said, and if he can just Nature's Madness here, or if he doesn't want to risk getting Heat Waved, you could also just um, go Heatran. Because Heatran doesn't take anything from Spike since it gets Grassy Turin and the Leftovers back. So this is uh, actually a cool core. Like, I like Bulu plus Heatran. Or like Bulu plus Pex, like all those cores. So it is nice as man as the Landris. Black Oblivion is probably gonna U-turn out. I doubt this Landris would be Zemo, I'm pretty sure it's just Scarf. So if he goes to his Landris, there's the U-turn now. Uh, Black Oblivion goes Green Ninja, I assume, yep. And... He could... Dark Pulse, expecting the Alamomola, or he could Spike. So the reason why I think that he's gonna go Alamomola is... Okay, he does double into Zapdos, expecting the Alamomola, good play. But the thing is, if this aloe is spadef, it could stay into Toxic to Zapdos. So I don't know if that was the... Yeah, he does go back and he turned to Scout for the Toxic. Good play. Okay, okay, good. Um, smart playing there on Black Oblivion's part. Kind of scouting for if he's set. Then he already revealed Toxic? No, he didn't reveal it. So he doubles back Zapdos on a Sable. Fine play. Um, but so if he wasn't going to stay in there, he was. He needs his aloe Mola. Now, if he's pro yeah, goes back into, Black into Bulu to get the terrain back. Uh, this is a little bit repetitive. He has to be a little bit careful to get the terrain up. Also, um, yeah, Holy Chain there was fine. I guess at this point, we don't know if he has Heatwave or if he doesn't want to go for it because he's fearing Heatwave to come out on Heatwave. I'm not quite sure. I don't know, I don't know what he roosted there, I guess. I don't know what he predicted there, yeah, honestly, I can, cannot tell you. So now he goes Latios, but he's gonna have trouble because taking this. Magma Storm plus Magma Storm after effect plus Toxic. And now he's forced to uh, recover up. If he could stay in here because Grassy Turin is up, but he could also switch out, it doesn't really matter. But staying in means, uh, and subbing means that he keeps taking Magma Storm after effect as when he would have switched out. He would, that would not have happened. And Black Oven has to... Of quick here to break the sub as if he can just magma again as he finally mega evolves. I don't know why he didn't mega evolve earlier. Subs again. The, oh, I said magma again. Subbing again was a better play because the toxic damage wrecks up. So, yeah, correct play there by Effie. Playing this pretty well so far. Like, you could say he could have gone save that on the spike, but like, that's, that's fine for him. So he does miss a Magma Storm, which sucks, but he can still keep the Ladi pretty low, and he's getting leftovers back. So this is fine for him. He's just gonna Magma again here, I assume. And he does miss again. So that's a bit annoying, but not not that big of a deal, honestly. Uh, Black Elven is gonna be forced out pretty soon with the Ladi. He can, like, uh, off-quick here to break the sub, but um, pretty sure he's gonna be forced out because Toxic is wrecking up more and more and more. So he could also sub again, but I assume he's just gonna magma. He off pass, okay. Um, so he was predicting him to pivot into his own Heatran there, or maybe into Greninja. Not, I'm really not 100% sure what he predicted there. So he does go Landris. And now he can just U turn out here, and I assume we're gonna see a Nature's Madness. So U turn into Tangrus is most likely gonna come out here. Because, like I said, Zapdos doesn't want to come in because it gets Nature's Madness, and if it roosts, it loses the flying type and gets hurt, hit hard by the Horn Leech and Woodham. So now, uh, obviously, if he doesn't want to stay in, he wants this Assault Vest on the Bulu. So he's just going to go Sableye or Landris, one of the two. Because he like he could predict the knockoff and go Sableye, or if he's Z-Move on Landry, he could also go to that. And even if this goes for Giga Drain, um, Sableye is maxed, but Devin can take that, and Landris is also going to be able to live one. So there's a Giga Drain. That's quite a good chunk in terrain. Now he brought Hard Lando out on Tangros, which means it might be Sky Strike. But on the other hand, um, if it's Rockium and Black Oven goes Hard Zapdos, he's scouting for Sky Strike and gets Rockium. That would be bad for him. So this is kind of a 50-50, I would say, between Rockium and Sky Strike. Mm, 
I guess he could sack the Ladi if he doesn't want to risk losing his tank. But I honestly don't know what the play is. Like he's in, he's just overall in a tough position. Like his Ladi is never gonna do anything. Greninja, Greninja might be able to get up more spikes because since he already has up one spike, Effie's not gonna be tempted to go Gren. He's going to, uh, to go Sableye on Gren. He's gonna be tempted to go Allo again as he does go for Sky Strike and pop the Tangos. Oh, that, that's huge, because now the Bulu has a fun time versus Black Olivian's team, but the Tango's gone. So you just go Greninja, and yeah, this is what I just wanted to talk about. Um, Spike versus Dark Pulse here. Uh, I don't think he's gonna go Sableye, just because the Spike is up, and if uh, Black Olivian attacks, then the Sableye is gonna be low, and he needs the Sableye healthy, exactly. He needs the Sableye healthy for the Heatran. So let's go Allo, and uh, Black Olivian makes a good play there, and Spiking. And now he's gonna be go back into his Heatran most likely. He obviously doesn't want to let his Greninja get toxic. Um, Effie could maybe just wish up. He doubles in the landers. Oh, really good play there, breaking the Heatran. And now obviously Black Olivian cannot stay in here. He's probably gonna go Zapdos or Landro. He goes Zapdos there. Covers the Earthquake. Effie gets up his Rock Swords. Rocks. Off quick sky strike. Last move could be Smackdown or SD, not 100 percent sure. Could be gravity. Zapdos is there. What does he go for? Discharge. I'm expecting Effie to switch out. Doesn't get the para though, so um, I think Horn Leech is a fine play, but Nature's Madness works as well. Horn Leech is yep. Just to get some health back on the Bulu. But yeah, two spikes now that's not bad for BO. If you can get the third spike up, that would be pretty cool. There's a sable eye. Um this that's a fine play on Effie's part just because. He does have Grassy Terrain to help him take the Magma Stone better, and I don't know if I said it already, but the Sea Terrain is most likely not max special attack, so he's fishing for a Spit Death Drop now. He has to try something. Like, at least he already got up the spikes, I like how he played that. I actually like how both players are playing this, um, but Bio just has a tougher time. Like, if he can... Like, if he just has... Better matchup, I just have to say it again. Um, but since he got up those spikes, it's not completely over. But getting rid of Tangos was super huge. So now he's forced to roost here. Effie could will wisp if he wants to. But he, he decides to go Bullet to get the terrain back up, which um, is actually not a bad play. Thinking long term there, getting the terrain back up, keeping his month healthy. Might be more important than uh, trying to risk there because Wisp could miss and he could potentially also go trend there. I expect no, no, he was he was forced to roost there because rocks are up and he would have died to rocks if he didn't roost there. And yeah, roosting there also gives him extra grassy terrain recovery, which is cool for Black Olivian. But now Black Olivian is in a tough spot. He might just want to go Heatran. Um, was he turned? What do you see? Nature's Madness? You see Honleach again? Yeah, Honleach covered the roost, so I completely understand why he made that play. Um, and now. What do we do here, Effie? Effie? I don't know if Sable I can switch in, but because two spikes are up and it's at 81, if I recall correctly. So Effie might have to go into his own heat turn here, expecting the Magma Storm, or he might want to stay in. Uh, but he wants, he wants this Bulu because the terrain is so nice for him. And the bullet deals really well with like three out of five months on BO side. Oh, but it would even beat the Ladi one we want because the Ladi is poisoned. So pretty much deals with everything besides the trend. So yeah, switching is a fine play. Did he break the switch? He's just a madness, which is understandable. He kind of had to hope for like everything, and I think. Um, no, I'm expecting probably a pivot into the Landris from Fe. And. Um, like Oblivion probably switching into Greninja or sacking off the Ladi, those are the options. I think the Greninja is still at full, right? So it would come in at like 88 and it would get Grassy Terrain back. Mm -hmm. I mean, Effie could Toxic if he wants to break the switch into Greninja. But I don't think he has to make that play at all. Oh, he could also go into Alamola because uh, Grassy Terrain up means Alamola can deal with Heatran a bit better. So he said he already clicked this play, it's just S2 is laying, or... Oh, he always timed out, wow. <laughs> what the fuck, I didn't even look at his timer. <laughs> yeah, but... I don't really know if, if, he, if B.O. can win this, like he definitely has to get up the third spike. And 
then get the Z-move off with Greninja on the correct turn. Because the Bulu is getting pretty low from these spikes. It's around half, I don't remember correctly. But somewhere around half. And if you can get up a third spike, it's gonna be even lower. So like, Aloe can get then flinched by Grin, which might bring in Z-Dark range. If it's Z-Dark, but I'm expecting it to be um, Z-Water, like I said. I'm just like trying to see how he can win. Like if he flinches Sableye or Mola down to get Ash Grin, that's his way of winning. So he was forced out there, and oh, did he spike again? He did spike again, fire play. Um, it was pretty unlikely that if he was going Sableye there with two spikes up, and yeah. Because then, even if he goes Sableye, he would be in range from Z-Move, and if he switches his Sableye out, expecting Z-Move, if he brings it in on Sableye, then the next time he comes in, he's super low, and he can't check the trend anymore at all, so he was never going to trend there. Um, good read on Black Oblivion's side. He gets a flinch with Dark Bolt, does absolutely no types of damage. Um, I'm expecting a wish here from FV. Leo switches in the trend. There's the wish. Now, he can pass this into Sableye. Pretty sure. So this works out perfectly for FV. So this is exactly how you play bulky teams like this. You play them patient. You don't make the risky wrong play. At yeah, like if you ran Sableye on the potential on the spike and Bo didn't spike, he would have been in such a bad position. So I think even though Bo got the third spike up and it worked out for Bo, if he went hard sap earlier, it would have been way too risky for FV. So there's the ruse because he wants this healthy. Um, could just see a magma storm come out here from FV and then um, Black Oven is either gonna hard grand or hard trend. Hard trends, okay. There's the magma. And probably a pivot into Greninja is happening here. And FV. The thing is, now with three spikes up, he can't really pivot into the, the Sableye as freely as before. Three spikes actually does a good chunk. Like, just in case Bo stays in, which I don't think he should. But just in case he stays in an off pause here, and Sableye has to take three layers of spikes. And if an off pause gets a spit dash drop, it will put Effie in a rough spot. But on the other hand, with rocks up, and if he keeps grassy terrain around, Scarf Katana, the like Katana is most likely Scarf, right? It can definitely win the game for Effie as well. The Ladi is already low. Um, Greninja doesn't kill with Water Shuriken and obviously gets outsped and Leaf Bladed. Uh, Lando gets outsped and get blown away by Grassy Terrain Leaf Blade as well. Maybe it can live one if it has an Intimidate, if it's a bulky Scarf. So like, besides Tran and Zapdos, he can get swept by Leaf Blade, so he has to be careful around that as well. Like, it might, he, if he might not even need his Katana to win the game, but we will see. Don't. Timeout B.O. Is that 15? Oh, yeah, he already made his move, yeah. yeah. he already made it. Yeah, I would just go Greninja, unless you want to sack the Lari. But I guess he wants to... I assume he wants to keep it around as a sack. Because Gren is still healthy, right? So he can afford to go Gren on the trend. Because, like, I don't think if he would stay in here. I think Landers is coming out. Like, Landers kind of already did its job. It got rid of the Tangros. It got the rocks up. That the rocks are definitely helping him out versus the Zapdos and Tran. He do, so Abio did risk the, it there in Earth Pause. Um, I guess he's Heatran was fast in the opposing Tran. I didn't really look. I didn't look at which Heatran got leftovers first. So he has four Magma Storms left. As he does miss that one. Okay, that was a huge turn and that sucks a lot. I'm pretty sure that would have killed. Even if the Bulu's AV it was super low. And getting rid of the. Bulu would have been nice for Black Oblivion, but ha especially with spikes up and getting rid of Bulu, and then eventually terrain ends. So that sucks. So he's gonna U turn out here, yeah, on the Alamola. Uh, into what? Zapdos or Gren? The problem is if you go Greninja, you have to fish for flinch. If you don't get the flinch, the Alamola just wishes his health back. So unless you Dark Inium, Greninja is not the play here, right? So he has go Zapdos. Mm -hmm. The thing is, um, Alamola gets leftovers, Chris terrain back. And if it's the death Alo, he could also protect here to get more health, but he does... Oh, is he toxic? He is toxic, yeah. So that, that's really nice for FV, because, like, now Zapdos is pretty much on a time... Like, and now... Like, Zapdos is on a timer. Zapdos has to take rocks every time it comes in, which means it's not going to be able to stay there forever. So he goes Gren now, and Gren is... It's now or never for Black Oblivion. Gren has to go for Dark Pulse flinches here. He does Dark Pulse. Uh, there's no flinch. Let's see. see Dark Pulse is again here, I assume? Yeah. 
Does he get a flinch? There's the whisk. No flinch. So Greninja is burned. So this is pretty much checkmate for Effie now. Unless this next uh, Dark Pulse flinches. Um, so Dark Pulse is doing around 27. So Z-Move would probably do like 60 to 70 percent. Just protect that to get more chips to correct play. Yes. Yeah, you guys can see, even though the spikes went up, um, that, yeah, that dodge, that dodge helped Effie, that dodge sucked. I would, I would have to think through what happened if he hit that. He still would have had Heatran alive, he would have gotten rid of the, uh, yeah, okay, so basically, yeah, Black Opal thing losing the Heatran means he did not have anything anymore for Alamola that can absorb the Toxic, so that was super annoying for him. Uh, so that's Hydro Vortex, but that was the wrong turn to go for it, unless he went for a crit. The 62 only. Now he pretty much can't win anymore. He already used up its Z-move, so he's never getting Ash now. Unless he gets a crit flinch flinch, something like that here. If he, if he doesn't flinch this one, he can pretty much... Yeah, he, I don't think he can win. Because Zatos is toxic. Um, Scarf Lando is not winning. There's a Scarf Katana on the other side. There's Alamola. There's also a Lando, so you cannot lock into... Like, you cannot lock into a crit move, and you can't beat everything. And, yes, yeah, he... Probably didn't get the flinch, he said GG, and I think he forfeit. He did get a flinch there, but I think the next flinch he didn't get. So he protects there to um, make it so that the next burn chip will kill the Greninja, and if he gets his recover, it's over, which he probably did, yeah. So Effie wins this, and Effie is now... Is he 5-1? and one? I don't remember his score. But yeah, I think Black Omen had, a, had a definitely a good potential to win this game if he hit that Magma Storm. Getting rid of Bulu... And also having like heat running, having heat running around would have been really important. Um, like if the, after his Zapdos got toxic and then Greninja did not get the flinches, it was pretty much over. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll pause real quick and show you guys the score. You can see here that the week ended six and six. I don't actually know what this means for which team can still make playoffs. I think Classy still have a slight chance to make players, but it's not looking too good for them. And yeah, unfortunately, I'm spoiling a lot of other games here. I can tell you that I recorded a lot of other games live as well. Um, yeah, you can expect in like the next days. Like some of the games, I still have to narrate over them because I, I actually like have not gotten enough sleep like in so many days. Um, yeah. Um, a part of it is like personal reason but part of it is also because I'm trying to stay up and catch like all these games for you guys and sometimes um, I could only like sleep three hours and then the like let's say I stay up late like 3 a.m. and I had to get up at like 8 or 7 a.m. right so <laughs> I didn't get much sleep in the last three or four days or so so that's why I have not been um, uploads and I know that the some uploads that I put up there were like DPP and black white games without commentary and I know they get some thumbs downs and people don't like that but I figured um, people still like seeing Smoktus chat and instead of not putting up anything might as well just put up some DPP and some black white um, I actually like narrating black white even though I don't have the best knowledge about that but today I, like earlier I just I just didn't feel like narrating at all so I didn't I just um, recorded BKC dice without commentary Mm, yeah, I still have a lot of lower T games as well. I still have also games from older weeks, um, from like SPL week 2 to 5. And a lot of them I sent to him in Ultra Balls, but he's super busy. He's way busier than me even. Um, yeah, he works a lot on stuff, so when he has time, he will also help recording. But he can like only do it every few days. And yeah, we recorded all the FLM, uh, the crashing CBB games, the CBB games, yeah. So you can expect those. Um, I recorded all the ABR games, I think the week 5 one I didn't upload yet, but I recorded the week 5 one, yep. What else? Yeah, way more RS games. Oh, and I actually started enjoying lower tiers as well. Don't still have, don't quite have the, the knowledge yet to commentate those myself. So UB will still narrate them, but... Yeah, that, that's pretty much the update. What else is there? Like this kind of type of update of, at the end of the video where there have not been uh, uploads with commentary or why there have not been many uploads. I think I forgot one thing, but I don't remember. Yeah, we have a we have a Den Premier League going on, which or like Den Auction 2, which is a 
pretty much a leak like this in my own Discord server. Uh, it's going on at the moment. It's week, week two is starting pretty much today. Whenever the manager sent me the lineups, I'm hosting the tour. Yeah, if you guys like interested in spectating that tour, like we have like not known people in there, but we also have tour players in there like Zomok. Then we have upcoming players like Kid of this my man Eclipse. They're definitely upcoming players. Uh, we have Kanto in there. My man Ultra Balls is playing there. He's managing. We had the weird rule that managers could also play. We're probably gonna change it next season so that managers can't play. Um, was that everything I wanted to say? Yeah, like if you want to um, spectate that and you're not on my Discord, hit me up in the comments if you want to invite to the Discord. And yeah, I know, I know you're like subdomains, you're interested in a few comments, so I'm gonna pass you a link because I don't like passing a link to everyone. I had a public link for a while, but sometimes some wild people join, so that's, that's not the best, right? That's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I enjoyed recording this. Also, like I said earlier, I didn't sleep enough last days. And that plus me recording so many games like in the last month. Um, I was also kind of burnt out. And like sometimes I just don't feel like recording. But uh, like if I, if I like take, okay, let, let's say last Monday, I think I recorded like three games in a row. And then, right, so like I recorded the Blunder game, the Zomok game, and I think a Black White game, right? All in one day. And I, I can sometimes I do that one day, and the next day I'm so burnt out, or the next three days. I cannot record anything. Like I will have to um, just record the screen and send the game to my man Ultra Balls because I, I just can't do it anymore. <laughs> but yeah, then if I take a break for two or three days again, then I'm super fine and I actually love recording. Uh, just just tough sometimes to like to like have the motivation. Like I don't know. Sometimes it's just fun to to ch just chill and watch the game and not have to like try to commentate on every single play that could happen because also also some players play really fast so it's like hard to catch up yeah that's pretty much it i've been rambling for way too long and i'm pretty sure i could have said all that i wanted to say in a way shorter time but since i haven't been uploading much i figured might as well might as well talk a bit at the end thank you guys for watching have a fantastic day and peace out bob